Well, hello and good morning. I'm Rodasi Campbell, and I'm really excited to share with you some basic meditation information and tips today. Uh, so many people on the planet right now are, are actually interested in meditation, mindfulness, consciousness, conscious awakening, and I'm a big geek about the whole conscious awakening thing. But today I'm going to do my best to kind of keep this really practical and really simple for folks who have never meditated or who've dabbled on YouTube or with apps, trying it on your own. And to just give you a little, hopefully, um, boost, you know, because one of the biggest complaints I hear from people who think that they can't meditate um, is that they are having too many thoughts or that they tried it but it's not working and the whole problem with that is that they they think they've 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 heard they've seen the billboards the posters that say clear your mind let your mind be still. And when a person has like 100,000 thoughts in a day, I think that was the latest research that humans have about 100,000 thoughts every day. You guys, how are you to stop that? How are you to get yourself to a place where you're not having any thoughts? if what we're typically having is a hundred thousand thoughts a day. Um, it's insane. And after having been a student and a teacher and a trainer of meditation for almost two decades now, I, I want to encourage you to really understand this basic very important first thing thoughts are okay you are a human being and the mind is here to think it just thinks now if that's making your um your brain cells explode or you're having a difficult time understanding what a, what well then what is meditation uh, let, let's just talk about the opposite of what, if I'm not trying to control thoughts, then what am I doing? If I'm allowing thoughts to come and go as they will, as they wish, then what? Well, we are able to focus the mind, right? When you're super engrossed in work, in creation, in someone you're enjoying spending your time with, um, you, it's very easy to be very focused, very attentive, right? To just be super attentive to what is, what you're doing, what's being presented. And meditation's a bit like that. You aren't always going to want to do it. You aren't going to always want to um, kind of be welcoming of what the experience is while you're in there. But as you do it more and more, it will be easier and easier for you to recognize just how much your preferences, your comfort level are irrelevant compared to the peace that's available to you, compared to the results of getting your eyes closed on a consistent basis. Let me ask you something. First of all, I'm going to keep telling you that thoughts are okay through this short little share because I've needed to hear that 500 million times from my own teacher and teachers, uh, peers and mentors over the years because certain subject matter in our lives is too exquisite for us to let go. It's too juicy. It seems just too important for us to let go. So you'll need reminders and I'll be here and others will be around for you to 
hopefully be reminded. All right, so let me ask you something. If you could have any one thing, like the ultimate inner experience, let's say, not necessarily outer, what would that be? Would it be peace of mind? Would it be love? Would it be a sense of freedom to be able to feel comfortable in your own skin no matter where you are? I can relate to wanting all of those things and I can tell you that I've heard thousands of people say that they want those things and find them through meditation. They've found that they can, I've found that I can take my attention off from the movement of my mind, off from the preferences and the judgments and the lack and the limitations and shift it back to the within, to the center of self, to the present moment. And then all of a sudden there's this sense of purpose and a sense of fulfillment, a sense of rightness, a comfort, a contentment, a familiarity, there's spaciousness. And initially I didn't recognize that spaciousness to be peace. I didn't recognize it to be a big old bath of love, but very much that's my experience now. So even though some of the concepts and there'll be concepts to you unless you are experiencing them that I may offer today <clears throat> might sound grandiose. It all comes back to the fundamental foundation of an effective practice that allows you to bring attention back within, back within, back within, over and over and over again, so that the space starts to become more and more familiar, more and more familiar to you. So what space? I, uh, all I got going on in there is thoughts, Rodasi. There's no, there's no space. Well, that was my experience when I first started meditating. But with an effective tool and with guidance, I found there's a lot of space, even when there's thoughts. Did your mind just explode again? From the surface level of the mind, the thinking level of the mind, that's impossible, isn't it? I don't want you to take my word for it. I am going to describe that to you a little bit more. <clears throat> but the most important thing is that you take this into your own practice. Take it into your own practice so that you can then find out for yourself, right? It requires an effective tool. It requires a little bit of experienced guidance to help direct you. Because like I said, I was like a fish in water, but I was clueless as to understand what the water was. So here's the thing. We're all existing within some space, right? Can you be aware of the space that you're existing within right now? Like maybe you're inside a car, maybe you're at work, maybe you're in your bedroom, wherever you are, there's space surrounding you. You are existing within and taking up a certain amount of space. And there's objects within the space. There's air within the space. But can you just be aware of the space? And if you are aware of the space, can you just be aware of any degree of peace that's within that space? Is there a quality of peace within your experience right now? It's really funny sometimes doing exercises like this. If you're, if you're not getting this, it's okay. If you are, great. Let me know either way. Uh, for real. Leave a comment. Share. I'm, I'm totally 
lost or yeah, I'm with you. Okay. If you aren't able to notice the space surrounding you, and if you aren't able to notice any degree of peace in your experience, it's just because you've been habituated to think about things rather than to drop down into noticing your, your actual experience. And guys, meditation isn't just about sitting on a meditation cushion or wherever and going into some, you know, transcendent state. It's about being able to come into life and meet life in a way where I'm not just thinking and commentating on my life consistently in every moment, but rather pure experiencing, being super present to stopping the addiction and the habituated way of overusing the mind, the mind kind of running the show, guys, and dropping down into this fuller expression of the experience of life, which for me is very simple, very natural, very effortless, very all-consuming, but it wasn't always that way, was it? No. Like I said, I was like a fish in water. So my point is, it's very simple and very easy, but we're working against this habituated way of, let me think about what she's saying right now and digest that and see if I can understand it. As opposed to the people who are getting the exercise about the space are actually letting go of that need to understand with the mind and coming into innocence and just pure experiencing. So n n not good, bad, otherwise, just is what it is. And some folks are supremely dependent upon having to understand everything before they will relax enough into the experience. That's okay. That's okay. This is why we have meditation tools. So here's another exercise right here with eyes open. Can you be aware of your breath? And if you can, whether you're breathing with eyes, excuse me, with through your nose or through your mouth, just notice right now if you're breathing in or out and then continue to watch. Notice every little part of the breath as it turns from an inhalation to an exhalation, as the exhalation ends, the inhalation begins again. Can you stay that attentive, that focused? Sometimes, so sometimes it takes a really good why, doesn't it? Why am I doing this? What is this going to give me? What will I get from this? And we're a culture of extreme need to have instant gratification, aren't we? I'm going to tell you that every time you take your attention to the spaciousness, to the degree of peace you can notice, to a meditative tool, to the breath, you are interrupting your normal mode of operation and this addiction to having to think everything through as opposed to being really present to and allowing for the experience of your life to be really juicy and alive and easier more graceful to to miss that is a tragedy isn't it everybody's waiting for some other moment when i retire when my kids are grown when i feel better when my circumstances change somehow then maybe i'll put my attention on the breath cuz i'll have time <laughs> But you're living right now, aren't you? You have right now and you only ever have right now. The next moment and tomorrow and the next year is not guaranteed for you, is it? But you have this moment. So what is your why? Why would you even be looking into meditation? Why would you even be attempting 
well, let's go back to your why for your heart's greatest desire. Like if you could have anything, if it's love, peace of mind, freedom, inner freedom to, to just be comfortable in your own skin. So if those are the things that you are wanting, if you're not, you know, if, if it's something else, let me know what that is. If you're not interested in those things, you're probably in the wrong place. But if you are interested in those things, a meditative tool, and especially one that will allow you to play with your eyes open as well as closed, is essential. Because there's, I don't think there's anything else that exists in our world that can take you from the 10% thinking level of the mind into a deep level of restful alertness. Abraham Maslow called that the peak experience. And it's an experience that we've all had in this life, haven't we? And we all want to get back there. So where there's not really a sense of me or time and space, not a need to have anything changed about the experience. And most of those peak experiences were pretty intense. Contrasting. Well, I'm going to tell you that take the intensity and the contrast out of the experience. And you can have that all the time. You can have it at least a lot more of the time than you're having it now. How's that sound? Probably when I was sitting where you are right now, I, I would have been hopeful and angry. <laughs> I would have been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there would have been my subconscious programming would have been like, this isn't possible for me. I'm too busy. I'm too broken. I got too much going on. I have too much pain. You know, um, whatever the story is. Most people I'm too busy is like the main thing. Some of us also feel really broken. I don't anymore, but I sure as heck did. <laughs> and don't let that voice, that subconscious voice, stop you from trying. How are you ever going to know if you don't try? How are you ever going to know if you can have a lot more magic, peace, contentment? being comfortable in your own skin, love, like real unconditional, real sustainable experiences of these things. How are you going to know if you don't ever try? So don't take my word for it. So the science says that meditation helps us to rewire the brain, we stop eliciting so many stress hormones. And you know what? Our stress hormones don't even just come because of what's happening in front of us right now, not just from so much work or the kids or, you know, relationship issues or body stuff. No. A lot of the stress hormones actually come because of the stories and thinking the rehashing of the past, the obsessing over the future. So what if you can shift that by just, just interrupting that, just stopping it right in one moment to come back, put attention on the breath? Well, that's what happens. And so you interrupt the flow of stress hormone into your nervous system. And given time, especially when you get your eyes closed, you give yourself the opportunity to also allow for some really delicious happy hormones to start to come through dopamine and serotonin and this bath starts to flood through your nervous system and the, the chemical soup in your body changes if you do it consistently well your chemical soup starts to be pretty consistently with the happy hormones and that's no mistake that you start to feel more on purpose, more in alignment, more synchronistic, more in, comfortable in your own skin, more peace. 
the ability to give and receive love. M mistake? Coincidence? I don't think so, right? Um, so if that's not enough for you, it, it can help improve sleep or at least give you something to do when you wake up in the middle of the night and your mind is racing. It can allow for your nervous system to come into a better state of homeostasis as far as the heart, you know, blood pressure. Of course, it evens out anxiety and depression stuff, right? Which I struggled with crazy as a young woman. Intense experiences. The rewiring of the brain, allowing for new synapses, for greater creativity, greater effectiveness, efficiency, you know, organization, intuition, to feel more free, innocent, in awe of life. So you have to get your eyes closed consistently for those experiences to kind of take root, it takes a little momentum but it doesn't take that much time. And again, a good tool and some good guidance are useful. A third thing I would recommend is for you to find others who are doing the same thing because it expands the experience and supports you in you know, holding yourself accountable to take the action which would be to meditate and to play with open-eyed technique, hopefully, which is in essence, supporting your highest desire. In essence, it's supporting you in getting your eyes closed, gets you peace, right? Getting your eyes closed, playing with open-eyed techniques allows you to feel a sense of fulfillment and purpose just for no reason at all. It allows you to stop obsessing over blah, 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 me, 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 life, me and my life circumstances to, oh, there's space here. And thoughts come and go, but there's space here. And in that space, I recognize, oh, now I'm able to recognize my okayness. Now I'm able to recognize that peace was here all along. I just was too busy to notice. So you can either keep going down that road where you're the person who's too busy to notice and you don't have the time and feel like a victim and feel angry. I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise. I don't have, that's not my gig. But if you are someone who is willing and ready to stop the suffering and stop the rat race, and you're willing to try this, then here's my recommendation. You can use something like peace is, peace as you breathe in, is as you breathe out. You can use something like Om Shanti. This would be like a mantra with the breath, okay? Just, just as an example of something you can do. You close your eyes, Wherever you are, you relax your body, take a few deep breaths, let your shoulders relax. You don't have to sit any certain way. Sitting upright in chair is perfectly welcome in your car. And notice, just take a moment to notice the breath. And then as you breathe in, thinking peace, and as you breathe out is, And then you can begin to just see, is there any degree of peace here? Yes, no? If yes, relax into that. If no, go back to the breath. And either way, let's all put attention on the breath. Notice if you're on an inhalation or exhalation, just to be attentive to what is. And now let's try Om Shanti. Om on the inhalation, Shanti on the exhalation. Om Shanti. Om as you breathe in, Shanti as you breathe out. OK. 
can you notice that your body is being held by gravity right here? Can you notice the spaciousness surrounding you in this moment? Is there any degree of peace here right now? And if you notice that, great. And if you don't, no problem. Put attention now back on the breath. Just for three or five rounds of breath, thinking either pieces or Om Shanti, whichever worked well for you. The mind may become distracted during practice, and it often will, especially for a while at first. And when you do become distracted, it's no problem. You just come back. That's all. You come back to the present moment, come back to the tool, come back to the technique that you're using, come back to noticing the piece that's available to you at that time. It's just a continual coming back and you allow for yourself to have whatever distraction arises can arise while you're practicing. The one distraction I want you to be aware of is the one that is the voice in your head that says you're too busy to do this, you know, too busy to take time to practice, too busy to get your eyes closed, too busy in the middle of activity to just bring your attention back. Hi, Danielle. So that's the one I want you to be aware of, you know, because if you, what you are desiring is for you to know peace, love, a sense of fulfillment and connection, a sense of comfort in your own body and life, a sense of clarity and, you know, um, all of those things that could be your heart's greatest desire that seem like they're far away from you. Well, they're really right here. And you're just too busy thinking about everything else to notice. That's it. So with a tool that allows for you to come back, again, it's more sustainable if you close your eyes every day consistently the consistency helps to change the wiring and the chemical soup in the body if you stop practicing inevitably the chemical soup will go back to the stress hormones the wiring in the brain will go back to whatever your normal mo was the good news is, is that you always have just right now to make that shift I know it's not always comfortable to get yourself to sit down and close your eyes because most of us don't want to sit down with ourselves and our thoughts and our feelings and the discomfort and all of that intense energy, but you get used to it. And if you can look at all of that as just stress leaving, yeah, you've been taking in all of this information, all of this energy coming at you from life, digesting it. Now it's time to close your eyes and allow for the steam to burn off, right? So yeah, there might be a lot of thoughts and sensations, but if you can let it go and let it be there and continue your practice anyway, then you're going to be healing your nervous system and allowing for the stress to leave more effectively and efficiently than it would if you were only ever just sleeping at night or working out. So my encouragement is for you to make a commitment today to set a calendar schedule for when you're going to practice, recommending 10 to 20 minutes every day. And you can do that if you can get that 20 minutes in uh, before breakfast, in the middle of your day, before dinner, wherever it is. Um, if you can only do 10 minutes, fine. 
set the timer on your phone with a lovely chime, use something like the insight timer, you know, and just do it. Find an effective tool if you don't have one already. Uh, the practice I have is the Bright Path of Shaya's Ascension. Thebrightpath.com is where you can go to look up what those techniques are about and how to learn them. I also have a free uh, how to meditate course at www.rodasicampbell.com, which is chock full of not only closed eyed practice, but open eyed practice techniques and support and inspiration. Find a group that or just one buddy that you can practice with, you know? And uh, if you're inspired and you're already practicing and you wanna take your practice to the next level, I do do coaching and support for folks. I will be having a launch for a program called Live Life in the Moment or How to Live Life in the Moment. And um, really guys, that's, that's what, this whole ball game is about. I'm not just a meditation teacher. I'm a consciousness teacher, a consciousness coach. And it really is about reestablishing life in the present moment, which by the way, is not a new thing for us, but a thing that we were all living in as children. We came into this life able to be free, you know, and, um, and we can return to that. It's possible for you. And if you feel courageous enough and willing to let it be possible for you, then find, find a, you know, an expansion of your practice or get a really good tool on board, find some guidance and, um, and, and schedule the time, make it non-negotiable, go close your eyes, find some tools you can play with, with your eyes open. I just gave you some you know, noticing the space around you, putting your attention on your breath. Listen, somebody could be talking to you and you could be playing with these things with your eyes open, especially, especially if you don't want to be talking to that person, right? <laughs> so it's a really great time to be playing with those things. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, drop a comment in this video or um, connect with me in the Facebook page. Meditation School is my Facebook page. And yeah, I'd love to work with you if you're ready to really rock this thing out and not just establish a solid meditation practice, but really learn how to reestablish life in the present moment. I wanna thank you for your time and attention today. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Again, it's Rodasi Campbell. You can find me on Meditation School Facebook page. Uh, RodasiCampbell.com is where the free meditation course is. And you can find my other courses, including the Live Life in the Present Moment. And I will be launching the Meditation Teacher Training in January, which is really exciting for my Omis who are ready to not only deepen and expand their practice, but take it into their profession and share it with others. So that's all for now. Keep uh, prioritizing your highest desire. Follow the thread of inspiration and I'll look forward to seeing you somewhere.